Welcome to the episode of Love and Reality Podcast. I am your host, Ricky Valero. On today's episode, we are going to be breaking down Love is Blind Season 7, the reunion show. It has been quite an interesting few days post-reunion as everybody shares their thoughts on everything that went down. I understand I'm a little bit late with my reunion podcast, but I always like with the reunion, you have the reunion and then you have the aftermath of the reunion that spells out on social media, right? We know and we're aware that this reunion was shot on October the 13th. So there's an amount of things that happened between October the 13th and when this aired on October the 30th, right? So a lot of things have happened. And then there's a lot of things that spill out into the United, you know, into the world of Love is Blind after that. You know what I mean? So that's what this podcast this week's going to be about. I'm going to share some thoughts on the reunion, but I'm also going to share some things that I've found on the internet that I find interesting, whether it's we have some couples that uh, we have new sing newly singles that are no longer on the market anymore, including two heavily active people on this season of love is blind and then on top of that we had a conversation with uh, a conversation happened with chris colleen obviously the creator of love is blind who talked about a lot of what went down in this season and dropped a little bit of tea on what that is and then of course we found out about two more couples who were cut from this season that didn't make the cut outside of our uh, outside of Brittany and leo uh, which, looking back now, I think everybody would say that they kind of wish that <laughs> Brittany and Leah would have made it, right? So, before we jump in, before we jump in, two more couples actually got together during their pods, but their scenes were eventually cut. If you guys remember Bowden, who was uh, in a situational ship with Marissa very early on in the season, he also built a connection with Nina, who of course was cast alongside of her sister Tara. Apparently, Bowden and Nina built up such a strong bond, they eventually uh, ended their time in the pods together as a couple. According to Vulture, Nina was unsure about peering on camera and was reluctant to get engaged despite her strong feelings for Bowden. Bowden, on the other hand, reportedly saw no, saw no harm in getting engaged and as part of the show's process might have helped uh, help their relationship. The two went back and forth uh, in the sitch throughout their time in the pods, but ultimately decided to leave together, just not engaged. Um, also, that Nina's sister, Tara, formed a connection in the pods as well, even similar, leaving with her partner without getting engaged. That said, both Nina and Tara's Instagram accounts, the sisters don't be appear to be with their love as blind partners anymore. Obviously, it's not, com not uncommon for other people to have their relationships, and of course, Chris Colin had reportedly in the past said they only have the budget to follow five couples. Sometimes we stretch it to six and we have to figure out how to stack the crew, the crews makes plenty of sense of whenever you're really trying to do it. Uh, he explained the workout to which couples seem the most authentic and therefore have the biggest likelihood of saying I do at the altar, which choosing whose journey to follow for the rest of the season. So it's definitely interesting to know that Bowden and um nina were in a relationship but the strong theme i think of the show continues to be is how are these individuals continuously going on the show with the expectations of not knowing what the process entails the process is hey you get to know one another and then you get engaged and then you go through the process so unsure about appearing on camera i was reluctant to get engaged despite her strong feelings for Bowden. That confuses me. Why did you go on the show and why did you waste the opportunity of somebody else to go on the show? There's a lot of vetting process, a lot of people that get turned away from this, this experiment. So why are we continuously wasting our time with people that don't want to be fully invested in the experiment? It's something that I'm very, very confused about. But nonetheless, um, let's see here. Also, um, before we dive into the reunion here, um, Chris Cohen discusses the Ashley and Tyler uh, relationship, a viewer's reaction to the other couples going into Wednesday night reunion special. Um, they talked about, let's see here, the timing of the uh, the election was coincidental. Um, let's see here, blah, blah, blah. I do reunion special. Let's see here. Going through the process, tricky moments were teased in the trailer. Um, like Nick proclaiming wanted to be the famous person. We'll talk about that stuff in a little bit. Over the seasons, we've given a back, uh, 
Over the seasons, audience have given feedback that hosts Nick and Vanessa can be too light on some of the participants or that aren't account are held accountable for their actions. How do you approach the reunion specials? There, there, there are different kinds of reunions. There are some reunions of certain kinds of unscripted show that are very much just about the drama. I think that our reunions are very mixed. There's an opportunity to close up loose ends, but there's also very much a celebratory feel. We witness people aspire to these incredibles. Uh, we want people to aspire to the to these incredible and very relatable goals of finding someone to spend the rest of their life with and the people and with some people in some cases have found that i think it's certainly worth celebrating i think even the people who didn't necessarily find that but yet found something something that they can take away from it that's transformed them in ways that is also worth celebrating i also really enjoy the fact that of as of last season's reunion we continue with this season we're to bring back some participants from previous shows that's a real treat for me and i think that is for the fans as well in terms of Vic, Nick, and Vanessa, I think you're going to make. I think you're never going to make everyone happy. Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read all of this nonsense to you guys here. Let's see here. Tyler choosing not to disclose his children until late in the season has brought up a lot of questions about the vetting process. What can you share about the vetting participants on Love Is Blind? A couple of things. One thing is we have a very rigid vetting process. We have background checks, psychological evaluations. Everyone in the world has a story, and we aren't the police, which. We don't relegate, uh, regulate or monitor their conversations, whether being filmed or not, by the way. We're not dictating to them what they should talk about, what they shouldn't talk about. Now, there's been rumors in the past that that's not necessarily true. But nonetheless, if someone has children or doesn't have children, that doesn't preclude them from participating in the process. Well, duh. If someone had a bad relationship with their mother or someone's had a certain sexual experience in the past is it, or someone is in debt, all of those things are very common for vast majority of people. Everyone has stuff. Everyone's lived life. And our job is not to make sure that everyone's talking about everything. Our job is to provide them the form that have they wish to use, blah, 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 blah. The difference is, is we're talking about kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it, it's it's kind of crazy. Uh, number two, I think it's important to say that we don't film 24-7, which whatever. Uh, so that's really the question best posed to Ashley and Tyler. What do they think? How do they feel? And that's something you'll see in the reunion, which whatever. Um, Tyler and Ashley don't have an obligation to Joey from Instagram. They just don't. And Joey from Instagram, I'm glad Joey has an opinion, but that doesn't really make a difference to whether Tyler and Ashley have worked through some things or not in the way that makes sense. I mean... Whatever, man. Um, let's see if there's any good questions here. Do, 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 Leon Brittany, blah, 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 blah. That's more of this. Uh... Also, one big thing takeaway from it. In seasons one through four, there were after the altar specials. Are there plans for two to continue that? He says, no, not interested in doing that. He said, why not? It sounds fun to catch up. And that's one of the reasons why the re with the reunion now, it's fun to catch up and see where some of your favorites have been. When you get into the after the altar structure, it becomes more like a docu series. And a docu series, as many people know, are really driven by drama. And after and a, and to go into an after the altar with Britt and Tiffany and Zach and Bliss or whoever, where is there going to be a drama? It doesn't feel real. It feels like at some point you're making something that's kind of not the sake of making it. I don't disagree with that. I mean, you know, I, I don't really care for the altar the reunion things unless the people aren't together anymore. And then it's like, you know, hey, good luck, whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely interesting to understand that. And then, of course, um, going into the reunion, um, there's a lot that was said about the reunion and good, bad or indifferent. I took some notes like I always do as I was watching it. I'm going to skim through those here with you guys, um, as I'm sure a lot of you have already watched the reunion very early on. Um, so many jokes, so many bad jokes by Nick. Like that was the reoccurring thing with Nick Lachey early on in this show. Joke after joke after pun after pun after pun. Like it was just, we got to work out the kinks joke from Nick already within 30 seconds of the show starting. Mama Fong was in the house, which I was very, very excited about. I love Mama Fong. Uh, Garrett and Taylor and now Nick with his terrible Taylor Swift puns. And then we get a photos of Taylor and Garrett fishing together, which is very, very, very adorable um photos from the fishing trip with tyler garrett and tim pretty cool i love it's one of the things that i do agree with like when you're with somebody um when you're on this show and you're navigating the show you do make friends with the other people on the show because these are the people that know what you're living through right so you understand what this person's going through and can relate to some of that um now of course the men and the women of the hour tyler said there's lots of laughter over the last year Ashley said she misses the bubble before we sh the, the show aired. Well, <laughs> yeah, no 
oh shit <laughs> i'm sure you missed that bubble um it's crazy when we start talking about the babies everybody just like was on the, on the stage just very very quiet I'm just not gonna say nothing at all he said the kids and the family didn't sign up for this and he said there was a friend that he was there for a friend and stepped up voluntarily and he helped he doesn't know anyone in explanation with his wife sitting next to him and garrett out of nowhere says i got your back um he and then ashley says who do you think has a better insight her or social media i mean there's some pretty damn good detectives on social media guys i don't know about y'all guys but nonetheless uh, to each its own vanessa protects the, uh, starts talking about protecting the conversation about the children um i don't have much to say about the situation and wish nothing but the best for tyler and ashley right sending love to the kids in this situation because they need it the most right uh, whether it's crazy, right? This whole entire scenario has played out. It's one of the most crazy things that's ever happened in Love is Blind because the problem with the season was is so much was focused on the outside because of the conversations that were had in the pods. If some of this stuff started coming out before, you know, the the big the big second batch of these episodes, it's almost weird to say why are we having these conversations if it wasn't just for driving drama because the thing about it is is tyler said he wanted all of the conversations to be off the air and then of course ashley wanted to bring it to the forefront of the conversation so with that being said why was it aired she wanted to bring it to the cameras but doesn't necessarily mean it needs to air you know what I mean? That's the very confusing part about this. They, I think they brought the children into the scenario for absolutely no reason. If we're watching the show and we know Tyler could potentially have three kids, it's it is what it is. He'll have to answer that to the when when the season's over. But now he's answering to the idea of saying, "Oh, uh, I don't think these kids know who I am." I it's it's confusing. It's very very confusing. This is a condensed segment that was just doodled down and and to me there's a lot a lot of things that happen on this pod on the show that whether it's it's condemning garrett whether or not garrett um uh, steven whether it's condemning steven or or the conversation we'll have about nick here in a minute all of these things come into play but nobody presses tyler and that's the that's the frustrating part of me is is there's not uh, any sort of levity there's not any sort of conversation there's not any sort of pushing a little bit back to being like hey guys like what is this scenario and because of that we're stuck in a situation where it's very confusing and that's where we're stuck um and like i said that's that was that that was the conversation uh, there's a lot of things that have unfolded on the air uh, ashley's gonna appear on the vile file podcast which i'm hearing was shot before the reunion or like um shot before the reunion or before the tapes had come out of uh brie bri the the baby mama talking and the mom coming out so it's definitely interesting it's definitely interesting um let's see ad is keeping her relationship talk secret but if you don't know now you know she does appear on perfect match season three and so does ollie um, we have seen several uh, pictures on the internet of these two out on dates together. So maybe they're a thing. You know what I mean? That's exciting for them. But she said she's not going to speak on it. But uh, totally understandable. She can't say anything about if she's in a relationship with Ollie because that ruins all the perfect match. So who knows if it works? Who knows if it doesn't? Long distance. Who knows? All right. Uh, Ramsey, Ramses and Marissa time. She talked about reliving the moment in the breakup. Um and she said it was very hard. Ramses talks about it. Marissa, like the entire time Ramses talks, Marissa's mom just rolls her eyes over and over and over and over again. Hilarious. Um, what derailed it for him? He said a let um, the latter part of the experience and they recognized that their energy was off. He said if he would move forward with her, he would feel exhausted and not be able to handle it. Very, very interesting choice of words here. Uh, very, very definitely. I can understand it, right? There's energy. They're matching energy. You're you're trying to match somebody's energy and stuff like that. However, the downside, <laughs> the downside of all that is watching and, and just dictating the idea of the lack of wanting to be in the experiment. I don't know. Like the frustrating thing with me with, with Ramsey is, is like early on in the pods, you're, we're invested in these two's relationship. We think that they're going to make it to the altar. And then we just leave the pods and he's just like out of the bubble. And 
even in Cabo, these two are like great. And in the real world, it's like, does this who is this guy that left Cabo? I don't know. Um, Vanessa, obviously Marissa Mothers, Mama Talks. She said she was on her way to the wedding and it was called off. She headed up and talked to him. She said she wanted to punch him in the throat. <laughs> Uh, she says she's thankful that he called it off. She thanks him for that, um, which I thought was a very sly dig at the same time, being honest. Um, she wanted to meet her one through this process, and she thought he was it, and he broke her, and she was devastated. Uh, you didn't see that part is what she said to, uh, to, to Ramses, and, he had to, and she had to pick up the pieces while he walked away. Um, and he said, no, I didn't see it. And um, Marissa was just like kind of upset. And then Nick Lachey said she's beautiful and her energy is beautiful. Um, the only thing Ramses really says, even though he looked like he was miserable the entire time, it looks like a man that has taken it on the chin over and over and over and over again. Um, wasn't really pressed either. Was very confused why he wasn't pressed on this podcast or on this uh, reunion. Another person that had a lot to answer to. The only thing that he does is he talks about the clearing up of the contraception and he never pushed her to force things upon her. Now, the thing about it is, is no, whatever the contraception and whatever, he did kind of push the sex stuff. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. Plus side is inserting a note here about Marissa. She did hard launch herself a little man on Instagram. It's you can head on over to Instagram and check it out on her page. But congratulations to her. Very, very happy for her and very happy that she uh you know found somebody that uh, can match that energy she's got. Uh Zach and Bliss are talking about the baby. Vanessa talking about the baby. She's very happy. Let me be honest with you guys. I know Chris Colin has came out and said that he's oh man he's so excited that we can bring our past couples here and catch up with them. No we don't. We don't need that only that at all like if you want to put them in the audience give them like 30 second clip of saying hey guys how are you boom 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 done so that's it that's all we need period end of story that's all um let's see here yeah zach yeah blah blah but i did find it funny though in their montage we did skip the entire uh Irina thing of his love story i mean like that let's like recap their love story and let's just skip the part of the love story where he didn't pick her first though thought that was kind of funny all right um here we are hannah and nick time she talks about her personality being very blunt and ends up sounding like a bitch she said i'm a weird and need to chill sometimes garrett stands up for him and for his patience hannah said she has a big personality um marshall's reactions Throughout this entire episode, I would love to repeat and have Marshall return at every single uh, reunion because his reactions are worth the price of admission. Uh, she says she's direct. That's who she is. She's like, I'm a bitch sometimes. I get it. And then I love AD says she's standing out 10 toes because she respects it. Mentions she looks great, which is true. Hannah looks fire. The glow up looks amazing. She does apologize to him. Now, I've seen in several different interviews where Hannah has consistently stood up and said you know what i am a bitch i acted like a bitch i was hard on him yeah she does follow up sometimes by saying oh man um i don't know why he let me treat him like that which uh, you take and you give i guess with hannah sometimes but the thing about it is is uh nick says to stand up and sa stands up and says the hate online that hannah is getting is not very good however hannah calls him out for liking the mean comments on social media which is a double-edged sword on both sides of the fence um, she talks about how she calls out his workbook, which was two weeks before the pods, where he said he wanted to sell two homes, the best shape of his life, and potentially be the most famous person in love his blind history. He did say that he writes 90-day goals, and he said that was before he even knew he was going to 100% be on the show. He said he was super genuine, and everyone would have, it, have his back minus her. And then Marissa says, well, not me. She said it was a slap in the face for, um, for the writing that Dan Hannah brings up he called her a bunch of names behind her back and he called her a grenade and ugly. Marissa said that she said that's the things that she was hearing. Nick said we, Nick said we can fact check it and it didn't happen. Insert another Marshall look. He said he never brought up Hannah's looks and Marissa says you're really not going to say it. Monica said you look, uh, you acted like a grenade. Nick asked Steven, he says, I don't want you to break bro code, but did you actually, did she, did he actually say that? And then Nick, uh, Stefan said, yeah. And he just like mic dropped it. And then Monica says she understands why she felt the way she did. Garrett says the conversation is immature. Marissa, Marissa said 
Hannah was a bitch to Nick and has room to grow. Again, that's the point here. The hate isn't fair. She said that that's the, my biggest point here. And I know everybody was like, oh, Ricky, why did you make that video about we need to be team Hannah? I'm not saying we need to be team Hannah. I'm just saying we got to apologize a little bit. Because if you think about it at the end of the day, if you're persistently being called ugly behind my back, I'm going to feel a certain type of way. You know what I mean? And you're going to you're going to project pr project that and it's not going to be nice. You know what I mean? Um, and then she calls out Ramses and says, you're just going to sit there and be quiet. Um, Alex said it's baffling and said Nick didn't like what Hannah looked like and own it. Uh, Ramses said if there's any moment to take accountability, it's right now. Let's keep it 100. Um, they're both wrong, period. Again, I think Anna's on a little bit of apology for how she's acted, but looking at this, looking at the show, nobody was ever going to feel empathy towards Hannah. My big problem and everybody else's biggest problem with this entire thing is, is Marissa felt a type of certain way. She pushed towards, um, Nick, Nick and, uh, Nick only. And that was, I think a lot of people's problems because again, we have this cloud hanging over Tyler's head. We have this entire situation with Ramsey. And the thing about it is at the end of the day, I know you guys don't, I don't know if you guys know this, but this scene was filmed over five or six hours. So we get five or six hours of editing, five or six hours of filming, and then about an hour, an hour, 25 minutes of what we got of that. So there's a lot of context missing. I know a lot of what went down. I know a lot of what was edited, but it's crazy to me to sit here and think about this and not understand why there's a little bit of hostility towards individuals that kind of push towards Nick. I get it. But Nick and Hannah are both wrong. I hope nothing but the best for best for both of them because they both deserve it. All right. Katie is in the house looking like a fan. Wan said she didn't. Uh, we got the playback of the scene. Katie said she didn't feel like anything was wrong. She was excited to meet to see Hannah and Marissa and said she trusted Katie. Uh, it's kind of a pointless segment. Katie felt a little slight of a Hannah, but saying that she didn't really trust her. If you watch the scene, they look a little bit lovey dovey, although Katie does kind of give Nick his business a little bit. It was fine. It, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I, I just say this. I hope Katie's on our TV more because, yeah, she seems like a good character to have on another reality TV show in the future. Brittany and Leo. Leo said he overcooked a little bit about the money. No shit. He even made light about how dumb he sounded. Um, Tim, um, sitting over there on his side, said he's a misunderstood guy. He said he didn't get you in trouble, but he's a good guy and creative. He got bars rapping, apparently, which is hilarious to even think about. Tim and Leo have a cool little handshake, which I found hysterical. Uh, he compared Hannah and Brittany to ordering pasta or steak, and I just died laughing. Um, Steven basically spoke up and everyone tells him to shut the fuck up, which was hilarious. Uh, Leo apologized to Hannah for how he acted in the pods. He said he would, uh, he said <laughs> hell would be if he got locked in a room and had to watch that scene all over again. I died of hysterics. Uh, they asked Brittany about the reveal. She said she jokes that she had hoped it would never be shown. She said she wasn't as comfortable with him as it, as it looked like. She was just uncomfortable with the situation. Uh, they knew that they weren't going to be picked off the top of their head. Brittany says they're really good friends now, and they talk all the time. Every time they would, um, <laughs> there's like little weird quirks that I guess that Leo does. They like He likes to take a sip of a drink or whatever. And then we find out that Brittany is off the market herself, and she is dating someone while Leo is on the market. Um, and then we get a nice little pun, 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 pun joke here by Nicholas Lachey again. Um we get a picture of the sleep apnea test photo, boom, and then Nancy kind of comes out of left field and says, who cares about the test? What did the text say? He said, um, nothing. Literally nothing. Like nothing. This was a short, sweet segment. Um, Stephen was like, oh, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. I fucked up. I had a moment of weakness. I don't even text that girl before. I never met her in person. He said it's the truth, and it was just... Blah, 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 blah. Um, he said that they met up for dinner, him and Monica, two weeks later, uh, and wrote a letter to her parents. And Monica was pissed off because he's like, um, so you you literally wrote those letters so that you could come to this reunion and say I wrote letters to your parents to show sort of sort of empathy. And I agree with that. Like that was such a triggering, like uh projecting of I'm the good guy type thing. And and whatever, dude. Like not a fan of Steven, never been a fan of Steven. I think he's an idiot. But um, he's like, nobody believes me, blah, blah, blah. He's a crybaby. This segment was like, 
short, like cut completely short. Like this was nothing. Like this was like a, a an afterthought, and it blows my mind. Again, we got twenty minutes of conversations with the uh, past castmates, but we can't get a damn confirmed list of what the text messages even said. Like, can we get a hint? Can we get a like clue? Can we get anything at all? Um, this was cut short. Tim and Alex time. I'll tell you what, I liked. Tim and I still do and I like Alex too I just feel like these two uh, should have never been a god I saw somebody says they trauma bond with bonded with each other in the pods and I was like you know what that is incredibly deep I guess a pair so what happened in Cabo was her dad was admitted to a rehab facility before she left for love is blind in Cabo they had an argument he said there was no animosity towards her and he fell in love with her he says He's telling his version of the fights in uh, Cabo. Alex isn't seeing seeming to fight it. He said there's there's worse. It was their worst moment is being talked about by everyone. She said nothing on her end with was assaulting him. He didn't. She didn't hit him. He agrees with that. Um, apparently, all she did was she called him a little ass bitch, and that's what got him all round up, which is kind of funny. Uh, she said uh, she said he was disrespectful towards her. She snaps like fucking goes off. She said it was always on your terms and what you wanted. Um, and she said, I protected you. What does that mean? I want to know what that means. Uh, nap time during the parents. She said she had been working with his parent or been with his parents from 11 to six. And then she had to be at work at 9 PM before she went to work. She went to take a little bit of nap. That seemed reasonable. The conversation between Tim and Alex, he said that their engagement ended because he never felt respected. He said he didn't mention that she was at the club at 4 AM and a flat tire and blah, blah cares the men of the show suck uh, Brittany kind of stands up for um and as they continued to bicker back and forth Vanessa said they should speak behind closed doors about this and settle it and he said Tim said nah fam very very interesting Tim's a very demanding commanding presence he he does speak loud right he is he's got a loud demeanor to him he feels like he's got to get his point across very just it is what it is. You know what I mean? Uh, check up on Jessica from season one of Love is Blind. Her brought her little kids out. Vanessa ran, like, ran right over to the baby. Uh, Nancy said she moved to New York. She and her partner. Uh, she met her partner there, and he's super shy. Marshall moved to L.A., which, if you didn't know, he did was engaged, but no longer engaged. And then the tea kind of was spilt the day that he, the engagement was called off because, I guess, his fiance Che? che was it Shay? Shay? She broke off the engagement because she found out he moved in to, was moving to Los Angeles and kind of really didn't even tell her and didn't understand why she was moving to L.A. and didn't have the communications about it. So that's definitely interesting. Um, all right. Taylor's parents, Fong and Tom, were um, are getting some voice time, which is very nice. She said it was exciting and touching to watch their love story unfold on the show. Her dad said he wasn't um, wasn't exactly the way he was scripted, but he saved money thanks to Netflix, which was hilarious. Got a big pop from the crowd. Uh, Taylor and Garrett, these two are looking to move to D.C. Uh, he tried to live in San Diego. It didn't work out. She helped him. We get a montage of their marriage. I love them. We talk about the uh, glow up of Garrett. He said he finding uh, he said finding someone that looked fine and opened the door for him. Um, she's and then honestly, a hilarious joke by Taylor was she said um, she joked that the next time next thing for their relationship is for him to for her to follow him on Instagram, which I tie hysterics. Um, and then the show ended with us getting a uh, season eight is going to be in Minneapolis, the fifth year anniversary of Love is Blind. And it's going to be season eight in Minneapolis. We had three members of the cast in the uh, in the audience, which was <laughs> so definitely an interesting choice for them to do that. One thing I will say is, could they be showing us three people that didn't even get engaged? Because I find that I would think that would be hilarious to me. But nonetheless, that is my thoughts on the Love is Blind reunion. Um, what could be fixed about Love is Blind Reunion? One, let's get rid of Nick and Vanessa. I understand that it's never going to happen, but it's an idea that I love because there needs to be somebody that's willing to push. Either that or they have to allow Nick and Vanessa to push boundaries. Or, or I got a better idea. Let's split it up into a two-night reunion. The first hour is the drama, the tea, and then the, the whole kid and caboodle, right? Let's just say hypothetically, it would have been the Marissa Ramses show, Stephen Monica show. It would have been the Brittany Leo show. And even if you want to put them in the other show, 
It would have been the, who else broke up on there? Hannah and Nick show. That was what the first episode would have been. First episode, part one of the reunion is about them. It's about the breakups. Part two is about the married couples. This is the people that got married and we're so happy. Here's their love stories. Here's what they've been doing for the last year. Here's some conversations. All of that stuff. Break it up into a two-night part one, part two reunion, and you settle it. And then you push the envelope. You ask the hard questions. You signed up to be on this show. You signed up for, for people to, to really watch your life. Now, do you think that sometimes people take it way too far? Absolutely. But, but you have to answer some of these things because it's you're allowing these people in your lives. You're going on a reality show. You know these things are going to come out. You have to answer to some of these questions. So there it is. Settled. Two-night finale. Part one, broken up couples. Part two, married couples. It's settled. It's settled. All right, folks, that is it for this week's episode of the Love in Reality podcast. I am looking for something to cover here on the podcast. Let me know what you think it should be in the comments below. Make sure to hop on over to TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Follow me at Ricky Villar underscore. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll talk to you guys next week.